So ever since I finished school, each of my working days has begun with the same super awkward scenario. A school assembly hall packed with a couple of hundred teens perched on individual chairs. You know, those lightweight, bright blue, plastic, stackable chairs with those legs that grate so loudly on the floor every time you uncross your legs or shift your weight or lean in to share a smirk. At the front of the room stands myself, beside a co-presenter and a teacher who is quite graciously giving that standard school speaker intro that we're all so familiar with. <clears throat> your whole year level has been pulled out of class for the day for a great learning experience, so put your iPads under your seats. If I see any mobile phones, they will be confiscated. Boys! <laughs> and without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guests. By now, of course, all of the audience totally know why we're here. And so you can totally imagine their reaction as soon as we share that announcement. Hi, we're from Project Rocket, and we're here to talk about bullying. I can say that from years of doing this, the awkwardness peaks that first moment that we drop the B-bomb, or worse yet, the C-bomb, bullying, or cyberbullying. <laughs> I guess when you're told that you're about to participate in an anti-bullying workshop at your school, you come to expect something really, really negative, judgy, typically uncool. I know that's what myself and my little sister Ro had come to expect when we were in school. And yeah, I guess that's why we, fresh out of school, decided to start our own effort, Project Rocket, to tackle hate in Aussie schools. We were motivated by a really simple idea, that which I'm here to explore today. We want to live in a world where kindness and respect thrive over bullying, hate and prejudice. A world where all young people are free to realise their potential. Now, that sounds like a really corny idea, but we all know that bullying smothers development and extinguishes potential. In some cases, it destroys lives. So from the get-go, we went for a different approach. Instead of talking at school students, we'd ask questions and really listen to their answers. Instead of trying to leverage guilt or inspiration as the reasons why people should stand up for everything all of the time, we just be real and understanding about the genuine risks that people face in challenging prejudice. We'd collaborate with the audience to come up with socially credible strategies for challenging bullying, strategies we'd all be willing to use. It'd be real, it'd be fun, we'd all laugh, we'd feel connected and therefore more prepared to look out for each other. That was the plan. So what I didn't know then was exactly what all of those school students would come to mean to me and my team. That they would eventually become our greatest teachers, our heroes, that they would totally transform the entire course of my life. That 11 years on, Project Rocket would have reached hundreds of thousands of young people all over the country and stand as Australia's youth-driven movement against bullying. So all of this is a huge surprise to me because when we started out, we weren't trying to launch our careers. We weren't trying to start something and not driven myself by one singular experience of severe school bullying, but more by the general potential of a world underpinned by empathy and connection. So I want to put a pause in my story for a moment and share a concept borrowed from social psychology known as reciprocity. You're familiar with this. It's like Psych 101. This is the idea that we generally tend to feel obliged to pay back the way we're treated by others. It makes a lot of sense. It sets up many of our moral expectations and obviously provides a really strong but totally selfish argument for kindness. You've got to deal it out to get it back in return. But the problem with this model is that while being nice boosts the odds that people are nice back, what about when they're not? Sometimes a cruel reaction could be catastrophic. And like so many people, I grew up with these simplistic and I'll admit super privileged ideas about kindness, which were soon to be blown out of the water. Because after nearly a decade of tackling bullying, in 2013 I copped a full blast of hate and prejudice myself. I still remember the moment we met. She was standing with a group of people and she looked back across her shoulder, real sassy, and she just asked, do you know who I am? 
just like that. We came from totally different walks of life and she hadn't dated a girl before. But we were both struck by an immediate curiosity. You know those connections that are totally extraordinary when they're happening to you, but also totally ordinary because they happen to people everywhere, every day? And you can kind of pick it sometimes when you notice a stranger on the train beaming at their phone and you're like, okay, either you're texting someone you're totally into or you're watching videos of baby owls on YouTube. Also a very strong possibility. I know, right? Well, I won't go into great detail, but after a couple of months of that undefined hanging out, smashed avocado breakfasts and meeting each other's friends, she decided to sit down with her family to tell them we were dating. And I guess that didn't go very well. Because from the moment they knew, she flatly refused to ever speak to me again. And that's where the trouble started. At first, I became the subject of some really stomach-turning homophobic comments made to my friends, my family, my staff. Rumors that I'd somehow managed to manipulate the straight out of her. I wish I knew that kind of magic. Arguments that being the older of the two of us, I should have known better than to think it was OK. And then more serious allegations, formal complaints designed to target my career, my reputation, to insinuate that Project Rocket was a window into something seedy. I was taken to court, and when that failed, intimidated by some dodgy police officer they knew, and physically threatened by people I still to this day haven't met. I kind of had to just stand there and watch through these actions taken by her and her family as my own character was rewritten into something ugly and menacing while she remained hidden by this spectacular cloak of fiction. And it felt like my life was starting to unravel. I dropped out of university. I moved out of the house I was living in. They knew I lived there. I stopped eating, sleeping, socialising. I was so very hesitant to defend myself because I worried that I'd make things worse for her. And I held a titanic-esque mass of digital evidence of our true interactions, but we both knew that in pulling this out, she'd be really outed to her family. So I suppose my care for her became the very weapon I held against her. And I guess while I now knew the inner anarchy of having given kindness to someone who then tries to destroy you, I was totally just left to imagine her torture. Imagine the torture of having tried to destroy someone who shows you care. I couldn't imagine how she was living with that. And so for a long time loomed the overhanging threat that this person I care for so deeply would try to harm herself. Meanwhile, it wasn't even safe to reach out to tell her I cared. Eventually, I did realise that sacrificing myself would not protect her from the reality of who she is, that it's not kind to shield someone from their denial, it's enabling. And I got help to stand up for myself, for the truth, for everything I believe in. And not without struggle. I can't quite explain the confusion of scrolling through our old text messages that once brought me joy, screenshotting the excited exchanges of two people just getting to know each other to file them into a folder marked evidence. The humiliation of sitting my own lovely hetero solicitor's office, photos of his beautiful wife and kids beaming brightly at me across the desk while I hand over my vulnerable, private, intimate communications with another woman to be scrutinised. You know, working to combat bullying didn't make it easier when it was directed at me, but it provided so much meaning. I kept showing up at school and running workshops and I found myself feeling some next level connection to the work that I've never felt before. Because now I had to think really deeply about what it's like to be bullied, about the different ways that people inflict cruelty on others, on communities, and sometimes whole cultures more systematically. And ultimately themselves, because, well, terrorising people doesn't do you any good in the long run. I found myself thrashing out the ideas behind Project Rocket, struggling to grow my worldview to somehow accommodate the reality that some people just can't tolerate kindness. For whatever of so many possible reasons, they try to destroy it. It was around that time that I was invited to speak at a huge summit here in Sydney, the National Young Leaders Day. 
The brief is to show up and share your ideas, you know, how, the, how you've been tested, the risks you've taken and your failures. So I stood in stage in front of 3,000 students at Olympic Park and I just blurted out my story for the first time. And just something so strange happened. That crowd of teens in a hall managed to see past my warbling, trembling voice and the terrible nervous jokes that I told to lighten my story. They just embraced me with this sincere group empathy, kind of like you guys are doing now. For the first time ever, I felt the collective weight of this movement we'd created behind me. The power of people truly connecting over a single idea. That very same idea behind Project Rocket. You know, being bullied shattered my view of kindness. But then kindness, the kindness of the thousands of teens I've only just met over the years, ultimately put me back together again. It dawned on me that all of the years of awkward intros, the times I'd accidentally spat on the front row, the individual expressions of revelation, of a commitment to change, to diversity, to generosity, the bold and ever complex beliefs of countless 15-year-olds coerced into action by their peers had amounted to this. You know, I really think that the ultimate act of rebellion against bullying is survival. And I'm not just talking about life and death survival. I also mean the survival of ideas that drive you, who you are, who you love, your culture, what makes you stand out, which can be brutal because that might just be the very reason you were targeted. Sadly, we do still live in a world where those who knock down others on the basis of our differences can still lean back on many social, legal, political structures that are systematically aligned with their prejudice. And this is why we must rebel. I chose to rebel against the most bizarre and awful cruelty I've ever known by surviving it. And if you're battling your own personal death eaters, so can you. I told myself, I'm proud to exist in the face of this hatred. I'm not defined by other people's ignorance. I am still here, and I'm still kind. So, of course, I still believe that kindness breeds kindness. But just perhaps not through that simple model of reciprocity I spoke to before. The truth is there is not one simple set of steps to ensure that kindness thrives over bullying, hate, and prejudice. It's a practice, a really tough discipline for all of us to blunder at and stumble through every day. And still, that doesn't take away the power of kindness. Even if unseen, we can never know the power of these gestures. Now, in 11 years' time, like Project Rocket, or well after we're gone, it may be your intention to carry others, but it could just be the very thing that carries you through your own blackest storm. When we're kind to people, we're paying it back to ourselves and them in ways we don't yet know. And if you can exercise compassion for somebody who can't or won't do the same for you, the hardest sort of kindness, then I really believe you'll have so much more to offer to this troubled, messy world we face right now. Ever since I finished school, each of my working days has begun with the same awkward introduction. Hi, I'm Lucy. I'm from Project Rocket, and I'm here to talk about bullying. And so much has changed over the past 11 years, but that conversation still needs to happen. And now, more than ever, with every person I meet, every tiny but valuable piece of this massive puzzle of humanity, I'm reminded that every one of us really does have a role to play in creating this, a world where kindness and respect thrive over bullying, hate, and prejudice, and all young people are free to realize their potential. Thank you. <laughs>